Welcome to St. Louis. We've had a few reschedules to get this fight and get you here fighting. How frustrating has that been for you and how important has it been for you to stay focused on finally getting into the cage and performing? Yeah, it's, it's, it's just allowed me to stay in the gym, get honest work in and um, stay focused. I mean, it's, it's, it's obviously been, what, nine months since my last fight, but it's just allowed me to stay in the gym yeah. and get that work in. Yeah. Do you find when you're, because obviously there's staying in the gym and then there's training for a fight. You've been training for a fight and then for whatever reason those have fallen through. Has training at that level made you improve all that more, do you think? Yeah, for sure. It's, it's like I said, it's just uh, allowed me to stay in the gym, be able to learn as on the way, keep keep grinding at it, staying fit and um, breaking barriers. I'm always, uh, I'm always wanting to challenge myself and, and break those barriers so so now that we're we're a couple of days away from fight, I'm feeling fit, I'm feeling strong, and I'm um, ready to go. Originally, obviously Dominic Reyes, guy you wanted to fight, that sort of fell through through via injury to him. So you've ended up with Alonzo Menifield. What are your thoughts on him as an opponent? He's ranked number 11, which is higher than Dominic Reyes is. What do you think of him as an opponent? And have you sort of ended up with a, a better chance for you to propel yourself higher up those rankings with this fight? Yeah, I mean, I've I've, I've been watching in the field for quite some time now and we knew eventually that we'll be facing each other eventually so i like i like minifield he's he's strong he's powerful he's explosive as we all know he's got the punching power but he's in my way have you guys had like some conversations before you said oh we know we're going to fight each other eventually have you guys spoke about this before yeah i think it was more of just a mental agreement we shook hands i saw him at the back in perth where he fought crute uh, congratulated him for his fight, uh, a very surprising good fight, um, and and we looked at each other like, okay, we we know we're going to fight each other eventually, but um, big props and respect to him. Yeah. You mentioned the hard hitting nature of him. Obviously, you look at him; he's a strong guy. So, how do you find success in this fight? Is it using range? Is it by showing you can hit just as hard as him? Where do you find the success to win this fight? Yeah, it's a it's a good stylist. Like stylistically, it's a good fight for me. Um, depending on where the fight goes. But, I mean, it's I, I can see this. This won't be the, the last time we fight each other. He's, I see that he'll be climbing his, ra climbing his way through the ranks after we fight. Uh, and, and, yeah, like I said, he, he, we will definitely be fighting each other more than once. So, yeah. It's like kind of a funny uh, dynamic to have, to know, like, oh, I'm fighting this guy, but this guy's going to be around. Like we're going to cross paths multiple times in my career. Is that like a fun thing for you? Do you enjoy that? For sure, yeah. Um, because I, I know that he, like, just if you look at his record, he's he's fought a lot of the guys, like top guys, and he's just been knocking them out. Very good style. He's able to lull people to sleep, but um, yeah. And uh, in saying that, he's he will be able to take the guys in the in the very top echelon of the of the of the um of, uh, of the ranking sorry the rankings or the division and he may be able to do the same thing uh, to those guys so um i know eventually when i beat him he'll make his way back up and we'll fight again last one for me what exactly does a win here do for you as i said he's ranked number 11 if you beat him convincingly you might even shoot Sh uh, shoot your way into the top 10 is that something you're looking at or do you think i got to get saturday out of the way first before we even start thinking about what's next and what this does yeah definitely like you can't look past alonzo he's like i said he's he's a powerful fighter uh, he's explosive so i can't look past that but i am looking towards the future where where um you know where, where i want to head towards but the ufc is unpredictable it's especially in the light heavyweight division Anything can happen, and if anyone can make it happen, it is the UFC. So, um, you know, at one point, we could be in the top 10, and you're fighting for the title. So, um, I'm prepared for my. I'm prepared for this. So, uh, at any point, I know that I'm going to be in that top five eventually. Carl, I'll show you. Um, do you ever look at the rankings and feel like, man, I should be a little bit higher than I already am, considering what you've done in the UFC? Like... For example, you got a guy like Bogdan Guskov who's got the one big win over Ryan Spann, but other than that, only one win. And I think he's ranked 12th or something like that right now. D does that bother you at all? Or It doesn't bother me, man. I mean, it's like I said, it's the UFC can make anything happen. And time will tell. When I get in there 
and steamroll some of these fighters, then they'll see eventually. Um, and yeah, and time will tell. It's just that you know, some of those guys will get those those um, fights where you know they just get get it given to them, and which is okay. I mean, if they prove themselves worthy of it, which which sho had shown just on that last event, and um, then they deserve to be there. So that's okay. Uh, it's just a matter of me when they're in my way, I'm gonna do what I do. Have you uh, have you bugged Kevin at all about being on your undercard this week? Hundred percent, man. You know, <laughs> we we give each other shit all the time. So um, yeah, he he's definitely gonna be on my undercard at every fight. <laughs> and then um, it seems like not too long ago we were talking about you kind of being one of the up and coming guys. What do you think about the guys like uh, Aaron Tao and Navajo Sterling? Like, how quickly do you think we'll see them in the UFC? For sure. I mean, the, the, the talent in New Zealand Australia is massive now. I think uh, just with the success that a lot of the fighters that are leading the way here in the UFC now, um, it's giving them hope. And the, the, the challenges that they're, we're bringing to them in the gym they're also um, stepping up to the plate now, so I mean they're they're going to be in the in the UFC very soon, um, and that's only to name a few of the fighters. There's a lot of fighters out there that you haven't heard of in the gym alone, uh, just that city kickboxing. So eventually they'll be here pretty soon, uh, if not this year. Right here, you mentioned your teammates at City Kickboxing and just how many talented fighters are coming out of there. What do you think it is that sets you apart from other fighters in your gym, city kickboxing, and just your community in general? I mean, yeah, the it's just the numbers. We've got a lot of numbers at the gym at the moment. We've got the culture there. Um, there's no shit given. Um, and uh, everything is just led by the leaders from the gym as well. Uh, obviously, the success from from Israel becoming the champ and being a very um, dominant champ, and then guys like Kai also who are, you know who fought f in the who's in the top five fought for the, um who's yeah in the top five, and um, it's just given people hope, and they're training alongside us. So um, yeah.